Over the past couple years, I've made a few videos looking at different ways to build state machines in Game Maker. In fact, I think almost every tutorial maker has explored the concept at some point. However, in this video, I'll be demonstrating how Game Maker Studio already has state machines and has made them available to us this entire time. In fact, it is a core concept behind how Game Maker works. For our state machines, we need two things. First, are states that describe how the state machine should behave and change state. This is often represented as a set of scripts. Second is the state machine itself. It must be able to have a current active state and run the code stored in that state. Now, if you've been using GameMaker for any amount of time, this would sound rather familiar, because what we have just described are objects and instances. Objects are just a collection of scripts that should run when different events are triggered, and instances perform the events described by their object index. We even have a way of changing the current object index of an instance using instance change. We can simply use instances as state machines and use instance change to transition between objects. GM also offers the inheritance system, which keeps base behavior that should run regardless of what state the instance is in. And we also get to use GM's built-in functions like with to find all objects in a certain state. But there are a couple limitations to keep in mind. The first is that after calling instance change, GM makes no guarantee that the instance variables will be available until the next step. However, in my testing, I haven't had any issues with this, but do keep an eye out for errors. Second, if you are using the physics engine, then physics properties won't be kept automatically when you change objects, and so you need to transfer that data manually. That's something else to keep in mind. Of course, if we're going to take advantage of this, we do need to start structuring our code a little differently. First comes the issues with the create event. We normally use them to initialize variables to their initial values. However, now that the create event will be triggered each time we enter a state, how do we initialize our variables without having our state transitions overwrite them every time? The solution is simply to have an initialization state where our instance variables are initialized. But what about destroying cleanup events? We still want to trigger those to run code when we exit a state, but we don't want it to clean up data that is shared across different states. Once again, we can simply achieve this by adding a cleanup state. This, however, gets a little tricky as instance destroy will now no longer work and we instead need to create our own functions to transition our instances to their cleanup state. Now, thanks to object variables, we can easily define what state to transition to when the function is called. In fact, we can even have different cleanup states based on what states we are in. You may find that your code ends up looking rather different once you start splitting up your objects into different states in that way. But in my test projects, I found that this project works really well in GameMaker, and I've ended up with much neater code. So why not give this a try in the next game jam, or even just as an experiment? Let me know in the comments what you think of it, and if you like it, why not give this video a like and subscribe for more content. I'll see you guys next time.